Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a highly requested deck, Abzan Midrange, featuring a few cards from the latest Explorer Anthology expansion, namely Tireless Tracker at 3 mana and Siege Rhino at 4. The classic 4-5 with Trample when it enters, drains the opponent for 3 and gains 3 life, so great curve topper when facing aggressive decks, and at 5 toughness even survives some of our own sweepers like Languish and maybe a Meat Hook Massacre for 4, author great tools against creature decks in the format, and then Tireless Tracker, a great source of card advantage, as we get to make a clue token whenever our land enters battlefield under our control, and we can sacrifice clue tokens to give our tracker additional plus 1 counters, so it can also beat down pretty hard. Card. And then looking through the rest of our deck, we've got a ton of spot removal at one mana, full set of fatal push, and we can even enable revolt nicely thanks to the clue tokens from Tireless Tracker, as well as maybe our fetch land fabled passage, which also synergizes nicely with Tracker, being able to make several clue tokens at once. And then at 2 mana we've got more removal with a full set of Heartless Act. It does have a few limitations, there are decks that can put plus 1 counters on their creatures, like the Abs on Humans deck or maybe the Angel Company deck, and even the new Boros Heroic deck has a few cards that place plus 1 counters on their creatures, but I think I still prefer it over other 2 mana options like Doomblade that does not get rid of Grease Fang, you've got Infernal Grasp that costs life which is quite painful against aggressive decks, and Power Word Kill does not work at all against the Angels deck which is quite popular, so I think I'm happy with Heartless Act so far. And then we've got three copies of Vanishing Verse to complement Heartless Act, another versatile answer, can maybe get rid of Planeswalkers, Enchantments, even artifacts like Parhelion before it gets a chance to attack. And then we've got a few creatures as well at 2 mana with Scavenging Ooze, which can hate on graveyards, great against a Grease Fang deck, but also just creature decks in general, as we have quite a few removal spells that just kill opposing creatures, so the Scavenging Ooze can snack on them. And then a Tenacious Underdog shines against the more controlling decks, as a recurring source of card advantage and hasty damage thanks to Blitz. And then at 3 mana we also have two copies of Graveyard Trespasser as another source of Graveyard Hate and a bit of life gain and life loss as well by exiling creatures from graveyards. And then at 4 mana besides Siege Rhino we also have two copies of Languish as we mentioned and the Wandering Emperor to round out our removal can also make Samurai tokens or maybe distribute additional plus 1 counters on our creatures and as a one-off makes it pretty difficult for the opponent to play around. And then as most mid-range decks in the format, of course, that are playing black, we want access to Thoughtseize, great against combo and control decks, but even the creature decks of the format are playing Collected Company, which is one of those high-impact cards that you want to take away before the opponent gets a chance to cast it, as you cannot really answer it one for one with spot removal. Even Monoret can have cards like Ember Cleave, which are quite scary to face, and you don't want to give the opponent a chance to play them. And then our mana base has 26 lands total, which is quite a bit, but we do have some utility lands. We've got two copies of Hive as a creature land to apply additional pressure, great against control, can also hate on graveyards. We've got Aiganjo and Boseju as channel lands, Aiganjo deals with creatures, Boseju with artifacts and enchantments. And then we also have the Triome that can be cycled in the late game of Reflooding, Flooding, otherwise a great mana fixing. And then as we mentioned, Fabled Passage, great with our Tireless Tracker, which also just wants a lot of lands, so we don't mind hitting a few extra land drops in the late game, but we're not playing the full 4 Fabled Passage, otherwise we need to have a ton of extra basic lands to search up, and then we also risk having too many tap lands early on, otherwise we have a lot of pathways for fixing 2 of each, we've got some fast lands, 3 Blooming Marsh and 1 Concealed Courtyard is a split, as we mainly want black mana early but don't really need a ton of double black in the late game, and then a few shock lands as well to rent out to mana base, to Godless Shrine and the Temple Garden, and some additional Innistrand dual lands to have in the late game as we don't mind having extra green for scavenging ooze, and do need double white for Emperor as well. So the mana base definitely something you can tinker with, and if you don't have all of these specific lands you can easily do without and change it around a bit, and we just want to make sure you have enough lands total and enough utility lands to spend your mana in the late game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Could play turn 1 Thoughtseize, which is effective if our opponent has their own copy of Thoughtseize in hand, or we can wait an extra turn, get our tapped Triumph out of the way, and let the opponent maybe draw an extra card that we can take away. Okay, let's have a look now. 
and our opponent is on what could be a mid-range deck, could also be a Grease Fang vehicle deck. Kind of hard to tell. So, what don't we like here? The Unlicensed Hearse I could see being kind of annoying in the late game. Or we can just take a Trespasser and then only need to deal with one of them, even though Languish can clean up both quite nicely. So the biggest problem card is probably actually the Castle, providing card advantage in the late game. So, yeah, close call. I might want to take the Hearse, as we don't have a ton of answers to it, and at least the Trespassers die to Languish. And then we can play our Fetch Land, so next turn we can play our Trespasser already. Have double black sorted, so I don't think it matters too much which color we fetch. I guess we'll go for a forest so we have more green for ooze. And then we have to decide if we want to run out Trespasser into potentially our own Languish. Although if we commit one Trespasser and the opponent plays two of them, while we maybe have a Siege Rhino out, then Languish might not be too bad. So I'll still go for it here. Their opponent plays their own copy. And we'll start by attacking. And kind of hope they just take it. And play a Siege Rhino. So Witherbloom Command is minus 3, minus 1, so we can still safely block. Ooh, Kalitas is a problem, but luckily we have a Languish. So, we have options here. Could even play Tarless Tracker, play a land, but then we have to wait a while to safely sweep the board with a Languish without killing our own Tracker. So what I can do instead is just play a Languish and keep my land in hand for next turn. And then, can we risk an attack with a Siege Rhino and have the opponent double block? Then we can kill Kalitas. Yeah, it would not be ideal. So... I think we just languish now and move on. Opponent also get one zombie from our 3-3 dying while Kalitos was technically still around. Trespasser's fine. And then now we probably go tracker plus land, start growing our tracker, hopefully get it above 3 toughness and then we can massacre for 3. Playing more Siege Rhinos is also decent, but kind of like the efficiency here of Tracker plus Land. And then probably no reason to crack my clue right now. Don't want the opponent double blocking either. In case they draw Thoughtseize, I don't want to potentially draw into a better card for them to take away. Even though it's unlikely that they take away a better card than Siege Rhino or Meat Hook Massacre. Okay, Invoke Despair is effective. I guess... Um, now I might as well crack the clue. And then I'll hang on to Tireless Tracker over Siege Rhino, I think. And take essentially 4 damage. Okay, so... If I play my land untapped and crack a clue, we still cannot massacre for three, which is our goal. So I think that means going Siege Rhino plus maybe, I guess, an untapped Buseju, so we can grow a tracker by one more. Which I should maybe start there, in case it changes our play. And then the plan is massacre for three next turn. And we have to play Siege Rhino in order to keep it daytime, so this doesn't transform. And then we can start attacking another Siege Rhino, excellent. This is gonna gain us some more life back. And yeah, next turn, setting up a nice one-sided sweeper. Opponent does have quite a few cards in hand, so the game's far from over. Best case scenario, they play another small creature. Gonna be an Aetherborn, okay, perfect. And a Sarulf, okay. Well, things going according to plan here. We can Massacre for three. 
and uh, get another clue token as well. And still get a bit of an attack in. <laughs> And a leftover siege rhino is nice to have. Opponents got their own tracker, and they did leave double fabled passage uncracked, so they can still make two clue tokens here. But I don't know if that's going to save them. Can remove tracker with vanishing verse, play another siege rhino, or even animate hive. And that's going to be a lot to overcome. So yeah, I can kind of see a black-green mid-range variant with a few similar cards, but uh, Siege Rhino certainly making a pretty big difference here. Can Fatal Push the token, play another Siege Rhino for value, and attack for the win. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is acceptable. Plenty of spot removal. Even a sweeper and a tracker to hopefully take over the late game. Play Triome. Next turn maybe a tapped shrine and then we can play our courtyard before it expires. Okay, put it on an angel's deck. And there are situations where Heartless Act doesn't get rid of an angel with a plus one counter. But for now, I think I still prefer keeping Heartless Act to maybe kill a 3-drop that Fatal Push can struggle with. Don't expect much removal for Tracker, at least. So that might stick around. Maybe a Skyclave Apparition can exile it. Bishop's scary. Okay, now I might prefer going Thought Seize, keep up Heartless Act. Can also take away Collected Company, which is kind of a must answer. And yeah, there we see Resplendent Angel to go with Bishop, Majada, and Youthful Valkyrie. Have to take Company, the scariest card. And then I'm most likely just gonna kill Bishop. That way, Resplendent Angel's not as scary, and at 3 toughness, it's easier to wipe away with a Meat Hook Massacre. Alright, opponent does go for Jada first. So, probably wanna just kill Bishop in response. Heartless Act also going to be a little awkward with Jada around. Okay, Fatal Push. Good draw. So I can give up a clue token on Tracker, so we can also Fatal Push. And then we don't have to worry as much about Resplendent Angel getting out of Meat Hook Massacre range. Or we can make a token, and then we can use a clue token to enable Revolt for Fatal Push, and that's an answer to Resplendent Angel which is maybe better in case we don't draw more lands and run out of steam here. So our opponent gets a turn where they get to do whatever they want. With an extra land they could play both angels out, which starts adding up. But hopefully we can keep up with tracker and a bunch of spot removal. All right, double youthful Valkyrie, opponent maybe missing out on two damage. And a siege rhino with a draw. All right, so we're facing a few threats. Youthful Valkyrie getting quite large, so we might want to push one of them. I guess there's no harm in sacrificing my clue since I'm unlikely to want to play Siege Rhino here. Wouldn't mind hitting another land drop. Alright, this one's tapped, so can still trade Tracker for Valkyrie, which might honestly be okay since we got our value and the Valkyries are only going to get bigger. If they take it, then I'm happy just pushing one of them. Alright, so now we'll crack our clue. So not even double blocking is a little surprising, since they could have taken out Tracker. But maybe they were happy just soaking up our entire turn. So we'll take six. And we have options. Languish isn't quite enough here to deal with their board. Massacre is only for three. So it's probably going to be push plus heartless act. Can start by attacking and see where we're at. 
would be happy trading for Resplendent Angel. Okay, so I could languish, enable revolt, and then push the Resplendent Angel as well. That's an option. Could just push Jada, play Siege Rhino, and keep up the pressure. Then we might struggle to outrace the Flyers. Or I can push Valkyrie, Heartless Act Jada, and then we're just facing a Resplendent Angel, which is still a problem, especially once they get to 6 mana to activate it. But we might be able to outrace a 5 5 with Siege Rhino. So we could pass a turn, or we can Siege Rhino now, and then just push Valkyrie, and then face 7 damage plus whatever Angel they play next. Point will be at 10. And yeah, we could potentially present lethal, so kind of like the Siege Rhino line, plus Fatal Push. But we can keep it up for now. Also have a creature land that we can't forget about. Alright, opponent with another Resplendent Angel. I think I killed a Valkyrie now, so Resplendent Angel's not as large. Still a 5-5. Five -five. But we can maybe set up an attack plus Languish to clean up the board. They've got their own creature land now too. And our opponent just hangs back. Okay, I guess we'll make a clue attack and then most likely wipe the board. Can either Massacre or Languish, depending on how they block. Could also Heartless Act to remove counters from our Splendid Angel if that lines up better. Okay, so we've got a double block on Tracker, single block on Siege Rhino. So what I could do is remove the counters from Resplendent Angel to keep Siege Rhino, and then just trade for the other Resplendent Angel, leaving them with Jada. Can also crack my clue first. Or we can let damage happen, and then languish, but then we're out of threats. Although we would still have Heartless Act to deal with Cave. I think I'm happy keeping the Siege Rhino around. So let's crack the clue first, see what we pick up. Fatal push would be ideal. Okay, and then Heartless Act. I can not quite save Tireless Tracker, so we'll save Siege Rhino instead. And trample over for one as well. And then Languish lines up nicely with our Siege Rhino in play. Oof, Collected Company could be scary. Although Massacre likely to still wipe the board at least. Overseer plus Bishop, okay. So Languish will leave behind a couple 1-1s, one which we can then Massacre. Vigil and Shadow attacks. And a Thought sees the draw. Can probably squeeze that one in. And then, do we attack first? A risk the opponent trading for Siege Rhino. I guess we'll start by getting some more information here. Alright, opponent just holding a land, that's fine. So there is a cave to worry about. I think we just languish and pass. Opponent's gonna be hitting us for 5 in the air, but then Massacre should be able to kind of stabilize us and potentially swing the race back in our favor. If I attack, opponent could triple block Siege Rhino. We trade for Overseer Jada, opponent gets a couple spirits, and then we can Languish to wipe the board, but then we don't have any pressure left. So I think I prefer Languishing instead of risking an attack. And best case scenario, they play an Angel that still dies to Massacre. Alright, just a cave attacking, so we're taking five. Not quite a two-turn clock. Hang on to Fabled Passage unless it lets us activate Hive. Which, I guess if we Massacre for one, it does. And our opponent packs it in. Yeah, close game here, but uh, activate Hive. Attack for seven, Massacre. Gain two more life, and then we should be able to outrace them. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Got our two new additions, and then some cheap spot removal, good mana. So it should be a good game. And a turn one Ornithopter, so opponent's an aggressive artifact deck. Stone Cold Serpent as well. 
Oh, let's keep a Fatal Push and hope they play an enchantment on one of their creatures here that we can punish. Heartless Act, another nice pickup. And yeah, this is kind of this all-in artifact aggro deck. Might go for the Scissors, turning Stone Coil into a 5-5, five five, but Fatal Push is the perfect answer. And then we'll keep up more removal here, I think. I'm okay taking two next turn to play Tireless Tracker. Ingenious Myth is a good one. Might be one of the few targets for Vanishing Verse, even though Vanishing Verse can exile the enchantment itself. And an indestructible Darksteel Citadel we would not be able to answer all that easily. Shadow Spear as well. Yeah, close call here whether we want to keep Vanishing Verse or not. Otherwise, I'm probably fine just pushing the Ingenious Myth, hanging on to Heartless Act. Yeah, let's try that. Another push is fine. So we'll play a Tracker. Don't expect much removal out of their deck. Maybe a portable hole, but doesn't get rid of Tracker. So I don't need to get immediate value, like I would maybe want otherwise. And yeah, we could see another... And Soul Artifact, which we can answer with Vanishing Verse. Yep, so glad we sequenced our removal this way. We'll have to take five. And land is perfect, so we get to make a token. Crack or Clue. And then might as well start attacking. And I'll wait for the Citadel to attack, so it's tapped. Reign of Truth. I guess that's a reason to exile the Ensoul now, so it doesn't pump for as much if they target Ornithopter here. But nope, opponent going for Citadel as it's indestructible. And it's no longer going to be a creature now, so we don't take any damage. Okay. Let's keep the ball rolling. We can play Siege Rhino and Fatal Push. Although I guess never mind, we don't have enough black. So do I want to Siege Rhino? Might be safer to just actually crack the clue, keep up removal, not take any risks. Maybe wait for them to equip. Ginger Brute's fine. And another Reign of Truth. Okay, that's going to start adding up. So let me crack the clue. And then, yeah, we'll probably end up killing the Ginger Brutes. Can use Heartless Act now and keep the cheaper fail push for later. We're not out of the woods yet. Another Heartless Act is useful, although again kind of missing the black mana to do it all. So sequencing might have worked out better last turn had we cracked a clue, maybe drawn into the tap land to play it, and then had double black this turn. So might as well crack the clue again, get in for six, and then next turn we can maybe drain them to death with a Siege Rhino. But for now, keep up our removal. And let's use a more expensive Heartless Act. Okay, so now Fatal Push plus Siege Rhino should be more than enough, although just attacking would do it too. Gotta get that Siege Rhino in there. Sweet, on to the next one. Uh, 
Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion deck, which could be blue-white control, which is not our favorite matchup as the mid-range deck, although our hand has some nice tools with underdog and tracker, so we'll give it a shot. Especially underdog, difficult for them to answer if they don't have an exile effect at the ready, as it will keep coming back with often no blockers to protect them. So even if this gets countered, it's no big deal. And if they do try and exile it, we can always kill our own creature in response, so it still ends up in our graveyard. And then now we have to watch out for potential Supreme Verdict next turn. So I'm not really feeling like playing out Tireless Tracker. So I'll just hit for three, play Tapped Hive, keep up removal to maybe protect from an exile effect. I guess Courtyard will also come into play Tapped later. That's okay, get the creature land online. Field of Ruin can now answer my creature land. And they're gonna activate it right away. Alright, at least we'll get to play Tracker and hopefully a land to make a clue token right away. And don't think it matters too much which color we get. Go for a forest so we can maybe activate an ooze more in the future. Step one attack. Now, the awkward thing here is a potential sensor countering tracker if we decide to play our land afterwards, but so be it. Resolves. Make a clue. And expect a supreme verdict next turn. In which case I'm probably just playing another tracker making a clue as opposed to blitzing underdog. And then I'm really hoping there's no farewell in our future. Often only one of these control decks, especially in an 80 card deck, we're not super likely to face it, but that would be the perfect answer to board of clue tokens and a graveyard with an underdog in it. Our hand's also getting pretty bad here with all these spot removal spells that don't do much. But if we can keep our tracker going for a while, we might be okay. Siege Rhino not bad either. Alright, so we'll play a land, make a clue, blitz underdog, and if they wandering emperor to exile my underdog, I can push it in response. And then we'll keep the siege rhino as maybe a follow-up to a board wipe. March on tracker, that works, cannot stop it with fatal push, otherwise. Having Tracker in the graveyard could be better in case of Scavenging Ooze or maybe a Graveyard Trespasser in the future. Shark Typhoon Hardcast, we can Vanishing Verse, so that's not a problem. Maybe hang on to Fabled Passage in case of another Tracker, although there's only a handful left here. So do we want a Siege Rhino Vanishing Verse or Blitz Underdog? Might be time to get the Siege Rhino on the board. Could also keep Shark Typhoon in play for a while, since we have so many spot removal spells for the sharks. So it's not really an issue, but let's just deal with it now. And I probably wanted to keep a more black mana here, in case we need to push anything, but I doubt it. Opponent puts Yorion on hand, can be Heartless Acted or Thought Seized even. So that's a useful tool in the matchup, could see Absorb counter it. Yep. Which could have been a reason to hang on to Thoughtseize. So let's just attack for 7, put the opponent to 4, and then probably find to crack a clue now, in case I draw another Thoughtseize I can cast it. I'll play Fable Passage and just not sacrifice it yet. And we did actually draw Thoughtseize, although it's too late for me to cast it now. But we can try next turn. Still hoping to dodge Farewell. Which we did. And yeah, I'll hang on to Fabled Passage still. 
Step one might be Thoughtseize. Get that absorbed once again, maybe. But that won't leave a ton of mana for other interaction. Can crank a clue and then still underdog. Another Thoughtseize, okay. Do we see a third absorb? It's gonna be March exiling Siege Rhino instead. But our opponent's not gonna have much left over here once we thought sees. Wandering Emperor, Yorion, Dovin's Veto. Probably take Wandering Emperor, which is an answer to Underdog. They can potentially save Yorion from Heartless Acts. Question two here is do we crack Fabled Passage? I guess we do get a Swamp since we might run out of basics otherwise. Blitz Underdog. And play tapped Godless Shrine, still a Fabled Passage in case we draw our last tracker. And they may be compelled to just play Yorion without Dovin's Veto if they don't have a land. And then Heartless Act is an easy answer. And we might have enough mana for Lethal here. Blitz Underdog, put a counter on it with Wandering Emperor, and we should have just enough mana to do everything. So yeah, we got to see the Power of Thought Seize, a one mana sorcery, forcing the opponent to spend their counter spell, spend more mana than we used, and we were able to secure the win, thanks to Underdog mostly. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand, facing Gigantha as companion, with a lot of spot removal, so if we're up against an aggressive deck, we have a pretty good hand, topping off with a Siege Rhino, and turn one Lumomancer points towards maybe a heroic deck. And I'm probably fine playing a tapped Triome, and then next turn we can start killing some creatures. Virtuoso is scary, and we probably want to kill before the opponent gets a chance to untap and maybe protect it with a God's Willing. And since we picked up Trespasser, I think I prefer Heartless Act. Opponent can also put some plus one counters on their creatures, in which case Heartless Act can be a little bit awkward in the late game, but now Trespasser can also snack on the Virtuoso in the graveyard. It's gonna be Anger. That's a type of card that you can punish with instant speed removal, but uh, there's always the risk of a God's Willing. Defiant Strike. Lumomancer up to 6, but it is currently their only creature. Another Fatal Push, so we can keep up multiple removal spells. Opponent still has God's Willing as a potential card in hand, so I think I prefer establishing Trespasser as a threat here, and then probably play this on Y to help with Vanishing Verse, so we can double spell that and Fatal Push more easily. Trespasser can start exiling stuff. And I might actually want to go for Anger first, and then maybe next turn Virtuoso once we attack. In case they play another Anger, they want to take any unnecessary damage. Looks like they might have the removal spell here instead. Dealing 4 to the Trespasser. Which would have been a reason to take out Lumomancer first, I suppose. But that's okay. Opponent still has to discard, so it's still a 2 for 1. And yeah, hopefully they don't have a ton of creatures left. And at 14 we might be able to handle a Lumomancer just fine. Alright, there's a Legionnaire. But we just take 2. Okay. So as much as I want to play Siege Rhino, I might be better off killing some creatures this turn cycle. Can also channel Iganjo, but I think I'm better off just playing two removal spells. And then I think I lead with Heartless Act. Given that our opponent's playing Gigantha, they don't have Feather as a creature in their deck, so Fatal Push pretty much kills everything we're gonna face. So I just want to use my more expensive and clunkier removal spells here. I'll do this main phase, I think. Try and kill Legionnaire. If they try and put a plus one counter on it, we can still fail push or Vanishing Verse in response. Alright, God's willing. 
So Vanishing Verse, of course, does not work on Legionnaire. But we can Fatal Push. And next turn, with a land, we can maybe play Siege Rhino and still Fatal Push. And Vanishing Verse also deals with Lumomancer or future copies of Virtuoso, for instance. Just Giganta in hand. It is pretty large, so it does block a Siege Rhino quite well. But uh, still have a Fatal Push at the ready. So maybe that was a reason to keep Heartless Act in hand. Although they still need land 5 to cast Giganta. Opponent running out Igancho so they can cast Giganta. Okay. I think I hang on to Fatal Push and now Heartless Act deals with Giganta nicely. Let's just do the main phase and start attacking. And Siege Rhino doesn't really need any help, unlike Lumomancer. And if now our opponent goes for, let's say, a Defiant Strike or Ancestral Anger, we can maybe punish them. Okay, for Choso, deserving of some respect. Although I still like keeping up my instant speed removal. Could get awkward if we draw a creature we want to cast, but we can maybe punish a pump spell here. And with two removal spells, I'm less afraid of a God's Willing. Bone takes it. I might want to hang on to a land in case of Tireless Tracker. And we'll make the opponent make the first move, otherwise I'm happy just racing 2 damage for 4 damage. That's a race we can win. Thoughtseize could have a look, although... Not sure what the opponent could be holding that we want to take away. Although I don't think it changes the math too much either. And a Reckless Rage, yeah, unable to kill Siege Rhino. They could have tried to go for First Strike Damage plus Reckless Rage to take out Rhino. And uh, yeah, may have potentially worked, but our opponent's forced to stay back. And yeah, opponent has to scoop it up here. Sweet, so close game against Red White Heroic. And yeah, we got to showcase a nice variety of matchups with our Amazon mid-range deck and face some of the new contenders in the format like Blue White Control with Supreme Verdict and the new Boros Heroic deck featuring the Hoplite at 1 mana, so decks you can expect to face at higher levels in ranked. And overall quite happy with how the deck performed, I think it's quite well positioned against most of the aggro decks in the format, but it will struggle against control as we tend to draw a lot of spot removal, which is not great in that matchup, but it is still winnable if you draw the right cards like Tireless Tracker and the Underdog at 2 mana, also very important. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.